stop the lies in the name of God. There are too many things that we can do. Wait here matters. Wait and same with here with day. Wait here matters that we can do with the prophetic ministry. Stop lying in the name of God. God is too clean, too pure, too holy, too organized, too disciplined, too focused to be doing all this rubbish work. Rubbish work. Stop lying in the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. Guys, good evening to all of you one more time. It's going to be a very, very serious moment. I did not intend to keep you too long. I just wanted to drop, uh, you know, a few things that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart. And uh, it will be a blessing to everybody who have joined us. We give God the glory in Jesus' precious name. Now, do me a favor, everybody, you know. Tonight's session is a very, 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 very important session. Reason is because um, there have been so much discrepancies that have crept into the house of God, to the body of Christ, and so on and so forth. And I would like us to get into certain uh, revel revelations or revelatory call stands and to dissect the heart of God, the mind of God. And it will be of a tremendous blessing to everybody who is under the reach of the sound of my voice. Uh, and the Lord will bless you. Share the page, tag everybody, and start a watch party. I know that this one is going to be highly controversial um, and so on. It's going to be um, extremely um, scintillatingly hot. But it is necessary and we need to be able to uh, talk. It's a phenomenon about black people. Uh, we brush a lot of things under the carpet. And uh, tonight we ain't going to brush anything under the carpet. Let's talk. And so everybody, you know, uh, call them and uh, let us talk. This particular past week has been a very interesting week. Um, it's been a very interesting week, just like January of 2020 was such an interesting month, especially in the man, in the, in the, in the nation of the Republic of Ghana. These are some of the things that when you talk, somebody might feel that, you know, you were stepping on your toes. And, you know, I do not blame them. I only blame the kind of lazy clout of Christians who have refused to learn. And when you refuse to learn, you will have bronze and brass presented to you as gold. Tag everybody. Let them all get on board. We're going to talk. Seriously. And you know, uh, the, the, the prophetic ministry, the, the real prophetic ministry, because of charlatans, because of fake people, just like before, because of this kind of fake teachings coming all over from Europe to this place, you know, uh, is blaring the sight of, you, sometimes I look at sensible people have been blared. Unbelievable. We are now behaving as if we have no knowledge of the Christ. Yeah. And so I'm going to be with you from now until, you know, when I look at the way um, we have mis misconstrued, misrepresented, misappropriated the prophetic ministry, misrepresented God, misrepresented his word, misrepresented all manner of stuff, and we call it in the name of the Lord. We put God's name in madness. We put God's name in rubbish. We put God's name in absurdity. We put the name of the Lord to total madness. 
and we wrap it and put the name of the Lord on top of it. It shocks me. It shocks me. And so when you look carefully, critically, uh, I'm going to mention certain countries, and I do not mean any disrespect to any of you. It's just a matter of just letting you know it's time to wake up. Wake up. When I look at the one place where the prophetic ministry has been abused, misused, misrepresented, uh, um, disdained, marginalized, uh, reduced to nothing, and all stuff like that, it is the Republic of South Africa. Totally misrepresentation. It is like we have, we have presented stones for gold. This is where we are. And so tonight I am going to be straight with you. I am not going to be missing words at all. These, you know, works of the devil is, is one of the reasons why tomorrow in our Bible study we have titled, let's talk Bible. We have titled, tomorrow's title is Enemies of the Cross of Christ. Enemies of the Cross of Christ. We are people who... Welcome guys, the network uh, took us off, um, but we are back. Thank you very much. Everybody who uh, is hanging on, thank you very much. I really appreciate Let us continue with our conversation. When you look at a nation like Congo, the abuse of the prophetic ministry that goes on in that nation is amazingly overwhelming. When you look carefully at a, a nation like Jamaica and you, you go to the Caribbean, to the Bahamas, the Barbados, uh, you know, places like that. Because, you know, in countries like Nigeria, like Ghana, like Togo, like uh, La Côte d'Ivoire, like Burkina Faso and all that, countries where there are so much idolatry and witchcraft are also lovers of the prophetic ministry. The reason is because sometimes they feel like the prophetic ministry is a replacement of idol worship and witchcraft. They, 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 because they use idol worship and all that manipulative stuff, you know, when people want to go for inquisition, they, they, they consult mediums and consult shrines and so on and so forth. And they feel like the prophetic ministry is that. I am going to dissect something very serious tonight. And anybody that is serious about God and serious about eternal life and serious about having a relationship on, on, on earth with Christ Jesus, and listen to this one, and anybody that is serious, serious, you know, about making Christ Savior and going to heaven, I mean, and becoming the salt of the earth and the light of the world and so on and so forth. That person will not take this particular session for granted. I'm serious. Anybody you know, call them up. This is a very serious moment. I'm serious. And I'm going to let you know certain things, you know, be clear. Let's get certain things clear. And then we are going to, you know, build up on something that is going to help us, you know. And I believe that the grace of God and the love of God and the hand of the Lord is going to help us uh, position us and grant us grace and do us good and connect us to where we belong. And, and the Lord will favor us and honor us like never before in Jesus' precious name. Uh, this is, you know, uh, go, not only going to be educative, it's not going to be informative, it is also going to be revelational. Revelational. That the grace of God will grant us revelation, and uh, that revelation will lift us up, you know, to where we belong, and the Lord will bring His people to the place of elevation. Yeah. All right. Let me read you something and then I will I will start. I'm going to read you Matthew chapter 23 verse number 23. Matthew 23 23. The Bible said very clearly it said woe unto the scribes and the Pharisees 
Woe unto the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites, for they pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and omit the weightier matters which are judgment, mercy, and faith. Weightier matters. I want us to now build our course on that, and then I will begin to tell you something. My subject tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is elections and prophecies. Elections and prophecies. In recent time, there have been this particular past, we have been very interesting, very ridiculous, and also, interestingly, uh, very trivial. Elections and prophecies. Everybody you know, invite them, start a watch party, share the page. Elections and prophecies. Is there any role that prophecies play in elections? Does God speak concerning elections? These are the subjects that I want to deal with in the next 15 minutes, and then we are going to close and go off. The network was bad, but by the grace of God, we fixed it, and it's clear, and uh, we're having a great time in the presence of God. So, listen to me very clearly. It's very clear that I will want to talk to you on some very serious and critical issues. Now, let me use the opportunity to say, so many people predicted uh, America's elections. Sometimes I sit and I'm asking myself, um, <coughs> There are Nigerians that are predicting America's elections. There are Ghanaians predicting America's elections. There are so many, many, many issues that are confronting us right now as a continent that sometimes I, it amazes me. First of all, let me get certain things clear before we continue. What is prophecy? Prophecy comes from the word prophet. So then the first question should be, who is a prophet? Who is God's prophet? Who is, if we see that somebody is a prophet, somebody carries the prophetic ability, who is a prophet? Let's, let's clearly get that one first. Because I am seeing people who are idol worship, people that are occultists, people that are cults, spiritualists, fetish priests, and zangomers, witch doctors, predicting things in the name of God. So interesting. Predicting things in the name of God. Some people speaking in the name of the Lord has nothing to do with God. God does not even recognize that he has certain so-called prophets wherever. Interesting. Very interesting. Share the page. I have a message from the Lord. Hmm. So then a prophet becomes, he, you know, becomes, uh, a, a prophet is founded. Somebody that is founded in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and planted in the presence of God. In other words, that person, first of all, is a born again, to, you know, born again Christian. Somebody washed in the blood of the Lamb, carries the unsung presence of God. The unction of the Holy Spirit speaks in the name of Almighty God. He works for God, he speaks for God, and not political parties. If the moment you tell me that somebody belongs to a political party, it's a digression and a deviation from the counsel of God and the things of God. Period. God does not take sides. I am repeating what I just said. God, he does not take sides. When God shows up, he takes over. God, he takes over. He does not take sides. If a prophet will speak, he will speak for God. 
He will speak in the name of the Lord. He will speak in the interest of God. Not for the interest of any human being or any political party or any group of people. The person cannot be in the interest of just one cloud or group of people. It cannot happen. When the Lord is speaking, he does not speak because, you know, he has somebody, uh, uh, somebody's interest over the other person. And so when I look carefully, seriously speaking, when I look critically speaking, you know, I, I am looking at the role of the church in nation building. And I realize that because of selfish gain and selfish interest, we have digressed from our cause, our main cause of soul winning, evangelism, making disciples for Christ, and making disciples and functional followers of Jesus Christ. We have digressed from that. We have, we have digressed from that. And because we have digressed from that, listen to what I'm about to say. We have now come to the place, you know, of absolute digression. No, it's very interesting. When people just saw my, my subject, you know, they, they, they have come back in. Here, we don't back lions roar here. Not dogs barking. No. We don't have time for any dog coming to bite or back. Because lions don't bite. They devour. They roar. Bridge yourself. It's going to be hot tonight. I've got 10 more minutes. You know, the bomb is going to be dropped. Or it's going to be dropped within that time. Listen to that. Now, interestingly, it is not only America that is bringing all this kind of manner of stuff that people predicted their elections. Now, I hear a very cynical debate. The election ain't over yet. Is it your election? Are you part of them? Why are you bothering yourself? Our job as Christians is to intercede for the nations. Intercede for the nations. And let's stop this petty little bickering, useless digression and diversion from our main cause. Souls are perishing and we are debating over nonsense. You better hear what I'm talking about. We are not joking here. It's a very serious business. People get an opportunity, a platform, like I have gotten tonight. Instead of pushing the agenda of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, we talk nonsense. And we strive and debate and bring little trivial issues which brings no profit to anybody. What sense will it make if I prophesy for NDC? What sense will it make if I prophesy for MPP and I am MPP's prophet and I am NDC's prophet? What sense does that, does that make? I don't believe that the prophetic ministry is for Asante Kotoko and Haas. I, I don't believe that Arsenal and Manchester are going to play and uh, prophecy is for that. I, I don't believe that prophecy is for, you know, Madrid and Barcelona. The prophetic ministry is for weightier matters. Things that pertains, you know, of importance unto God. Things that, you know, constitute to pertinence unto God. Things that are so dear to the heart of the Lord. Not nonsense. We, we bring the prophetic, the, the prophetic ministry to the light, the mind of God. We bring it to places where God's interest must be established and the kingdom must be. That is where we bring the prophetic ministry to. Not rubbish. Not rubbish. And because of little stuff, you know, some political parties can give to people. They buy you some cars, give you some little dollars and all that. Give you diplomatic and service passport and grant you access to the VVIP lounge. And then you begin to talk absolute gibberish. Gibberish. And so I want everybody to be able to get certain things straight. The prophetic ministry is not for trivial and useless things. 
The prophetic ministry is for weightier, weightier matters. Things of importance, things that are dear to the heart of God. Things not, not you know, uh, 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 Biden will win and uh, uh, Trump will win. No! The mind of God comes, you know, if Biden is winning, what is the intention of God that is backing it? If Trump will win, what is the intention of God that is backing it? God doesn't just choose people with this will win that we win. It's not, prophecy is not betting. Prophecy, the prophetic ministry, is not for betting purposes. God always has an agenda. In every generation, in every dispensation, in every time, there is an agenda that God is pushing. Now you are going to see, listen to what I'm going to, now you are going to discover, huh? now you are going to discover the fake, fake prophets. Now we are going to see falsehood in display. Now we are going to know deception, seduction. I, I, I'm going to tell these upcoming young prophets that are coming, you know, up, and I'm going to tell you something that is don't follow sensation. Don't follow useless things that, you know, will bring a trend, a trend, a trend to your name. The prophetic ministry is not for you. It is not for your glory. It is not for your interest. It is all about him. It is all about Christ. It is all about God. It is all about his glory. It is all about his interest. It is all about his mandate. Not nonsense. Not absolute nonsense. It is about God and his kingdom. Period. And so when you look at the prophetic ministry, it speaks about, you know, uh, three very, very important things. Number one, for, for knowing. Number two, foretelling. Number three uh, is when people come to the place of forecasting. Foreknowing, foretelling, forecasting. God can reveal something to somebody and that revelation is not meant to go out. When you have a foreknowledge, the Lord can tell you, I am about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And God passes through to speak to his friend Abraham. He is speaking, sometimes the prophet is the friend of God. And God is speaking, you know, to his friend. Some of the content that comes up is not for public consumption. The Lord can say, you know, whoever is going to win Ghana's election. But the Lord may not reveal it to just for the public consumption. God may be speaking to just the prophet as his friend. And may I say that Old Testament prophetic ministry is not the, the same as the New Testament prophetic ministry. Oh yeah, I want to talk to you. you, if, you if you are comparing Old Testament prophet to New Testament prophet, you may be making a very big and huge mistake. I'm telling you. The Old Testament prophets are absolutely different from the New Testament. If I compare Agabus to, you know, somebody like Elijah, it's a total contradiction. Now, apart from New Testament prophets, we have what we call end-time prophets. Eschatological prophets. That is my assignment. Eschatological pro prophets of the end time. They speak the agenda of God, the mind of God to the end time. They are declaring the past. So it is when, when an end time prophet is speaking, they speak on certain things. They speak on context. They speak on content. They speak on number three, analysis. Number one, content. Context. Number two, content. Number three, analysis. People are trying to tell us that, you know, because they had a dream and because they had a vision and because they had a revelation, we shouldn't think. What is that? The fact that you had a revelation doesn't, doesn't stop me from analyzing what you are saying. I have the right to analyze. The Bible said test all spirits and see if they are of God. If somebody is speaking in the name of the Lord, I need to test that spirit. I need to bring that context, that content, and that analysis. And yes, that what they are saying 
truly, is it of God? Is it of their stomach? Is it of their own mind? Is it of their own intention? Tia! Tia! Things that just can make people popular. That is not good enough. It's not good enough. Now, these people that are making all these predictions are bringing the name of the Lord to disrepute. Now, since last week, people have insulted the name of the Lord, insulted the prophetic office, insulted the church. Railing of accusation and insults. Very sad. But the prophetic ministry is to honor. The prophetic ministry is to lift. The prophetic ministry is to raise up the name of the Lord and lift up the name of Almighty God and glorify Almighty God. That is what the prophetic ministry is meant to do and meant for. Sometimes when you speak like this, somebody it feels like you are against somebody. That is not the thing. The Bible said that you shall know the truth. John chapter 8 verse number 32 You will know the truth and the truth will make you free And I'm trying to tell the end time believers Wake up These people have been taking you for granted For a very long time It's time to wake up Wake up Somebody is speaking in the name of the Lord I have the right to test that spirit I have the right to pray about it I have also access to the throne of God Let's stop all these mystics Mystics Yeah And games Gimmicks Stop all these mystics Whenever you tell me something, I also have the Holy Spirit. I have the right to pray about it. The, the Christians are so lazy and lackadaisical. The fact that somebody who calls himself a prophet spoke, uh, doesn't mean I should accept everything. Go and burn your house and I'm going to burn my house. Don't wear braziers and they remove it. Don't wear uh, briefs and they remove it. Don't wear earrings, they remove it. Don't wear bracelets, they remove it. Stop the gibberish. I also have access to the throne of God. You are not my Holy Spirit. You are not my Holy Spirit. I also have access to the Spirit of God and to the presence of Almighty God. I have access to the throne of God. I can also pray about what you are saying. Now look at the disgrace you are bringing to the name of the Lord and to the work of God. In the name of all these baseless and useless predictions. Which God have not spoken. The Bible said, who say it and it cometh to pass when God Almighty has not ordered it? Why in the cat? We are nipper. We are nipper. We are honam. You are flesh. It is God that makes something come to pass. The fact that somebody calls himself a prophet doesn't mean they are a demigod. You are just a human being that the Lord has just, you know, ignited just the slightest, slightest grace on you. And you should be humble, 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 and give God the glory. Most of these, your prophets started very well. We loved them. We applauded them. We cherished them. We celebrated them. We, as a matter of fact, we adored God for their lives. Then they brought in all kinds of madness. Deviations, heresies, digressions, you know, misconstructions, misconceptions, and all kinds of crazy filth. They tarnished the image of the pristine office which they are standing. The office which is so pure, which they stand. The massema to pankwa siyasem ebinu mansanu muzi ne sikasem dia forget about it. We must see what men do so serious. Now it becomes deception. We pursue boo. I can see the phone starts, and then they begin to deceive people. Kofa we brought this that 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 I can see. 
And now when they are talking, when you see people deviated and digress so much, when they are talking, they don't say by the grace of God or God willing, if the Lord will or if God will touch you. Now they speak, I will do you. I will heal you. I will bless you. I will help you. It comes to self. Jesus said in Matthew chapter number 16 and verse number 20, 24, as he said, anybody that will come after me, let him deny self, himself, and take up his cross and follow me. Huh? Let me tell you something. God can give you a revelation, but that, that revelation, when it comes to part, you have no right to claim the glory of the Lord. You have no right. Most of these predictions, if it comes to pass, all they will say, I prophesied. Self. Self. And I'm telling you, most of these, your so-called prophets who died, it is the Lord that cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them off. Look at the number of people that were impregnated. One church in Nigeria, the preacher, prophet, impregnated 20 girls at the same time. 20 girls at the same time. When people say, I don't care what you think. If you speak, I don't believe. Because I realize that most of these your prophets are liars. Most of them are liars. Professional liars. Blatant lies. They can lie. Very interesting. And I'm going to tell you, anybody who can speak in the name of the Lord, one attribute to see a clean, a genuine prophet, a man of God, is humility, modesty, and meekness. I will say that again. If you want to see a prophet of the Most High God, humility, modesty, and meekness, they learn the art of giving God the glory. They mature quickly. Not nonsense. They don't speak, you know, having all these iconoclastic tendencies and talking gibberish all over the place, defiling the name of the Lord, bringing the name of the Lord and the pulpit of God to disrepute. Whilst I close tonight, I want to tell everybody that is watching us, God does not lie. Two, God that cannot lie. Let me tell you something. When I see certain things in the name of prophecy and I look at the packaging, I instantly can tell this is rubbish. If God wants to choose David, he has chosen David. If God rejects Saul, he has rejected Saul. It's not like if Saul does something. No! That is why we have different kinds of prophetic prophetic presentation. I mentioned them. I'm going to repeat them. Foreknowing prophecies, foretelling prophecies, and forecasting prophecies. Which of these prophecies, which well, the prophecies that are, which category are they? Which category are they? Let me say this categorically. I am not saying that there is no prophetic ministry. I am not saying that there are no prophets. The Bible said a prophet is he who speaks and it comes to pass. The word that the prophet has spoken genuinely comes to pass in the stipulated period of time that have been predicted or forecasted. Not the mess we have ourselves in right now. You said God said. What happened? God does not lie. Numbers chapter 23. The Bible said he is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man that he should repent. We should stop lying in the name of the Lord. Stop lying in the name of God. Stop lying. Stop the lies. In the name of God. This is what I want to say. In the name of the Lord. Period. Stop lying. In the name of the Lord. The Lord does not lie. 
Stop lying in his name because of what you can get. Stop lying in the name of the Lord. You have brought too much disgrace and disdain to the name of Almighty God. Stop lying in the name of God. I'm telling you. Stop the lies in the name of God. There are too many things that we can do. Wait here matters. Wait and some way here with day. Wait here matters that we can do with the prophetic ministry. Stop lying in the name of God. God is too clean, too pure, too holy, too organized, too disciplined, too focused to be doing all this rubbish work. Rubbish work. Stop lying in the name of the law. Useless predictions. Who is forcing you to prophesy? Who is forcing you to prophesy? And who are you trying to please? Because you don't impress God. You cannot impress God. I'm telling you. All these false prophets are no different from the false teachings. Same thing. Same rubbish. Same rubbish. Stop lying in the name of the Lord. We are sick and tired of your crazy dreams and your crazy visions and your crazy revelations. I'm telling you. Crazy dreams and visions. Causing all kinds of commotion and confusion in people's marriages, in people's homes and confusion. God is not an altar of confusion. The spirit of the prophet is subject. When we say is subject, is composed to the prophet. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, the spirit of the prophet cannot override the prophet, cannot overpower the prophet. The prophet, once the spirit of the prophet is composed under, is subjected under the prophet. Prophet Ninki Kankwa Siasam. The prophet speaks the mind of God. John chapter 3 and verse number 34. He that God sends speaks the words of God. He, he speaks the words of God. Once you are spoken the words of God, he does not care whether it pleases you, whether it excites you, whether it, it is nice in your ears and all that. They, they don't care. Once they deliver the word of God, they have delivered it. They don't care about the impressing you and all that kind of thing. It does not come into the picture. And may I say that self-aggrandizement, selfishness, self-centeredness is not the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is not an, 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 an aggrand, aggrandizing spirit. It's a very, very, very holy spirit. Spirit. I'm telling you. A holy spirit. Yeah. I am going to read you the scripture. This scripture, I know Ghana hates this scripture. Hosea 9-7. You hate it. You don't want to hear it. But I will leave you with this scripture to go and think about it. Hosea chapter number 9 verse number 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel or Ghana or Africa or the world will know it. That the prophet is a fool. And the spiritual man is mad. For the multitude of your iniquity, yeah, and hatred. These people are full of hate. Hate. And I look at all this rubbish teaching coming from Europe. These people calling themselves whatever. You know, they, they are full of hatred. You don't believe what they believe, they hate you. That is not the spirit of God. That is not the spirit of the Lord. I mean, I have people yesterday, you know, in the F5 service, a coach from Fadama. He's a full Muslim. He came to church. 
The fact that he is a Muslim. Saturday in the wedding, we had almost about almost about 26 or 25 Muslims that came to the wedding. They were so excited to see me hearing the preaching because they've been seeing me on television. How can Muslims be seeing me on television? Because they watch it. Sad hatred. The Bible said, as you turn and drew, I will top and drew. Israel, even when you say what you for no, and you Jimmy for, now who you money for no, and you bought them ni. We me mum or you do do, and they or time or time or time. Eh, wow, makumi. Where na me di bejam? Na me di amunti na se na munti ense unu. As if you have no access to the throne of God. As if you don't have access in prayer. As if you cannot pray for yourself. As if you cannot prophesy to yourself. As the Bible said, the Lord told Ezekiel, prophesy to the dry bones. If a man of God is speaking and the word of the Lord comes, it cannot be debated. The Bible said, where the word of a king is, there is power. There is power where the word of the king goes. There is power. You see, I'm not you know, narrowing it to who said this and who said that it didn't come to power. I ain't got time for that. What I want to tell you, if God said it, if God said it, it shall come to pass. Finish. If God said it, especially when I am declaring a prophecy and the prophecy is a, a forecasting prophecy. If God says it, it shall so. Let even the person not believe it. There are people in the Bible whose prophecy came, they didn't believe. Like Zechariah, he didn't believe in the It still came to pass. It didn't stop the prophecy. It doesn't stop it. I'm serious. It doesn't stop it. If God says, I will raise up Rahab. Rahab is a prostitute. Prostitution will not stop God to bless Rahab. He is sovereign. What he wants, he will do. I want to tell you, some people in the Bible do the same thing. Others do it. God will punish one and God will favor another. That is what makes him God. He is sovereign in his own proclivity and his own personality. I want everybody to understand. Once the pro prophecies come in, in categories. Yeah. Foreknowing, foretelling, forecasting. In other words, if I am doing a predictive prophecy like that, what all these ones were supposed to be, once it is said, it surely come, will come to pass. Tell Saul I have rejected him. Tell David I have raised him. It doesn't change anything. Nothing changes anything. Look at the way we have allowed unbelievers to speak against the name of the Lord for the past one week. Talking nonsense against the name of the Lord because somebody made a predictive prophecy and it didn't come to pass. It is sad. And I'm telling the Christians, you don't want to study the word of God for yourself and know God for yourself. You want somebody to always, always be talking rubbish to you. And this is what happens. If God is speaking, you will know God is speaking. The person speaking will know God is speaking. You know why? Because it will be in the sphere of the presence of God. And once it's in the sphere of the presence of God, everybody will know that the Lord is speaking. I'm telling you. You are sick. I'm telling you. When God speaks, you will know that when I'm here, if God says, I will make Kofi a king, it shall come to pass. The word that the Lord spoke to, uh, you know, it didn't it, it, it will surely come to pass. If the word does not come to pass, the Bible said in the Old Testament, stone that prophet. The Lord never spoke that word. Sad. And some people have the nerve to come and defend falsehood. They have the nerve to defend falsehood. 
It's sad. And it's all because we don't want to learn. And this is what happens. And I'm going to tell you that deception and falsehood, more of it is coming. Let me tell you, when a, a, when, when a prophet of God is speaking, the Lord can even tell a prophet something that he doesn't like. When, when you are speaking for God, your opinion doesn't matter. Let me rephrase it. When God is speaking, your opinion does not matter. In other words, the person that is speaking for God and working for God cannot add your opinion to the counsel of God. You can't do that. Because the moment that happens, you dilute the content, the context, and the analysis. You will dilute the context, the content, and the analysis. The whole, you know, specimen becomes diluted. The word is totally diluted. There are prophets in this end time. There are real prophets. They speak and you know, aha, uh -huh, God has spoken. Prophets don't, don't want to impress. They, they don't force themselves. I want to, you know, say something for now. God does not share his glory with anybody. If God is speaking, he's speaking. Your opinion doesn't matter. What you will get doesn't matter. The Lord speaks. Finish. I'm telling all of you, go back to your closets and go, go and do your homework well. The Lord does not speak empty words. When God is speaking, he speaks what he means and he means what he's speaking. I'm telling you. If anybody is ex-anointed, pack yourself and let the word and the counsel of the Lord prevail. I finish up by telling everybody, you don't know Christ as Savior. This opportunity is not for debate. Just to tell you the God you serve is not an author of confusion. God will not say, you, I have chosen you. And then somebody else say, God say, I've God cannot be speaking two things. At the same time, take note of that. And if we are ready to grow in the things of God, we will not come to this place of nonsense. For the past one, we get dear, dear, them, dear, dear, them, because we are, yeah, guru, yes, yeah, guru, yeah, guru, them. So if it were places like Saudi Arabia, and Aoko Kasa, same way, yeah. by now, everybody who had made a prediction which didn't come to pass, your blood will be spilt by now. Because we can speak freely, free expression, freedom of speech, freedom of whatever. And that, that's why we can speak and speak against the name of the Lord. May the Lord help us. You don't know Christ as Savior. Your hand is on your chest and say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I will serve you all the rest of my life. I pray for your children in Jesus' name. Let me ask for forgiveness for anybody that made a prediction. You know, when it comes to like games, football, politics and all that, everybody has his own interest and his own side. You can be a supporter of Arsenal. You can be a supporter of whatever, whatever. It's fine. You can be a supporter of that political party and be a supporter of that political. God is not a supporter of anything. He is almighty God. When he show up, he does not take sides. He takes over. He takes over. All the sides comes under him. I cannot wake up and say that I am for party one or party two. A prophet does not do that. A prophet works for God and stands before the people. He works for, he is working for God. He stands in the gap between, the, between his God and his people. And that is a very difficult place to be because sometimes God wants something the people don't want. And sometimes the people want something that God does not want. And the prophet becomes that firm, firm, very resiliently firm person. Speaking the mind of God. Let there be order. Let there be order. Let there be order. God is speaking. Let there be order. God is speaking. You go have yourself a peaceful night. Tomorrow, okay, 101.7 FM, 5 a.m. to 6. Tea happens. In the evening, I'm inviting you to Bible study.
Alabaster International Ministry, the Amponsa Memorial Temple, Tesano. Six in the evening, we start. Come with your Bible and come and study God's word so that you will not be carried to and fro by any wind of doctrine. Please, please open your eyes. Venomous beasts are all over. The Bible said the Antichrist are all over the world. Wake up! Christ is coming again. May the Lord bless you and keep you and have yourself a peaceful night. Send my greetings to your family. And remember, when righteousness becomes a lifestyle, breakthroughs, it becomes automatic. On Wednesday morning at Archimota Girls Guy Training Camp, Forest in Paibokesia happens. Don't miss that for anything in the, in the world. And I'm telling you, it's time to give your life to Christ. If you don't know him as Savior, it's time to be serious with God. So that this deception, you know, I don't blame these people. I, I blame, I blame, and, and I'm praying for them that they will repent and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You know, I blame our leaders all over the world. Those are the people. If you guys were serving the Lord in spirit and in truth, these guys, charlatans, will not be infiltrating. Because you have joined all kinds of occult groups, secret groups, and all that, you need these people to be infiltrating. May the Lord help you and bless you. The Lord bless you. Have a good night.